second attempt recording this video because being the huge idiot that I am, I didn't press record. What's up everybody, I hope you're well. So first of all, I just want to say thank you to everybody who's recently subscribed and those of you who have been here since the beginning. I mean, it's mind boggling that we have 6,000 people, you know, following the channel right now. I would have never ever imagined to have reached this kind of growth and you know it is something that I'm super super thankful for so thank you very much guys and a big thank you goes to all my patrons of course who have been a big reason why I was able to you know carry on in producing these long complex videos that take an enormous amount of time so thank you guys so a couple of weeks ago I made a post in the community tab I don't know if you saw it but you know I asked you guys whether you had some questions you wanted to ask me and I must say I'm a little bit disappointed because you could have asked me anything, anything you wanted and I expected to get some really embarrassing kind of questions, stuff like that. But no, you you were so nice and just basically asked me music, you know, music related questions. So let's start with the first one. So the first one is from Hudson Holland Composer. And sorry if I'm butchering all your names. The question is, I was wondering about any techniques you might have for like a chase scene kind of music. Um, I don't know, I think, I think I might have done something like that already. I mean, I haven't done a video specifically in scoring, scoring for like a chase scene or something like that. But I've covered 90 orchestration techniques right now and it would have been crazy not to have done a couple of those. I'm not sure specifically what numbers they, they would be, but I'm pretty sure I should have done something like that. Maybe somebody in the comments can help this guy. The next question is from Kaz Van. I don't I, I'm not gonna even try I have a question I was wondering what is your goal with music in life do you want to be a teacher or write for film or write original pieces to be played in a hall etc thanks for everything so I definitely don't want to be a teacher I can tell you that I mean it is something that I have been doing for a very long time and that I still do but but I don't think any musician's goal is to be a teacher or maybe or maybe it's just me i don't know i just i just don't have this particular kind of you know calling for teaching but i do still enjoy to do that from time to time and i do definitely enjoy making you know educational videos for youtube and for patreon and there is going to be a big release coming soon which i'm i'm not sure whether i can talk about it or not and in terms of what my goal with music in general is i can tell you what i would like to do with music eventually is composing full time uh, which is not something that i do at the moment i still do a little bit of everything a little bit of teaching a little bit of composing orchestration and music prep for other composers as well and i and i still play live as well you know i'm a guitarist and a bassist and uh, even if that definitely slowed down since you know the beginning of the pandemic that's something I, that i still do and still enjoy doing but yeah my main goal would be to eventually be a full-time composer and maybe just play guitar on a couple of gigs from time to time just you know to have a little bit of fun so next question from barkus aurelius cool name would you consider doing a video where we see you orchestrate a melody step by step i've done something like that in the past i don't know this is something that people ask me from time to time and it is something that i want to do but i still haven't find found the proper format you know documenting my whole process could take days depending on the complexity of the music of course and you know then having to edit all the footage and make a video out of it i'm not sure how that how that would turn out to be plus it would be a very very long kind of video and i don't really know how people would respond to that because because i can tell you that you know youtube's overall attention span is pretty short i tend to make long videos already and the retention rate which is basically how much people watch of, of your video it's about you know 
20%. So out of, you know, a 30 minute video, people tend to watch about, you know, seven minutes. But I can tell you that I plan on making, start making some live, live stuff uh, here on YouTube. And I haven't done it yet because to be entirely honest with you, I'm kind of terrified, but it's been in the plans for, for quite some time. It's just, I just haven't found the courage yet to make myself do it. Ian says, congrats, thank you. Then we have Joseph asking where I got my education in orchestration. Um, I didn't, if you mean like a formal kind of academic training. I'm, I'm self-taught. I have a degree in pop music performance with my main instrument being guitar but I'm entirely self-taught when it comes to, you know, composition and orchestration. The way I learned was by transcribing, you know, at the time when I decided I wanted to learn composition and orchestration, I got a, I got a MIDI keyboard and, and a bunch of scores, you know, John Williams scores that I liked at the time and kind of taught myself to play the piano a little bit and started to transcribe the music and try to figure it out by ear. And eventually that gave me a tool set that I was able to reuse in my music. It was quite a long process at the beginning. I remember it took me quite, quite a bit of time to be able to, you know, take in all the information and reuse it, you know, in something practical and write actual music that doesn't sound like an exercise or doesn't sound like I'm copying somebody else. But yeah, that was my process really, transcribing, transcribing some orchestral scores and then try to, you know, make an impression out of it. Next question from Linus. Do you know where else you could go by learning about orchestration in this sort of practical way of presenting it, where they tell a theme they want to evoke and how they go by evoking that mood? I'm not sure I understand your question, Linus. Um, if you're asking me how to learn orchestration and composition in a more practical way and kind of cataloging, I don't know, like a specific mood, with 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 a said orchestration or a said kind of you know harmonic device i would not try and look for that answer in a book i would try to figure it out maybe find a specific scene in a movie or something like that that has a very specific kind of mood and try to figure out what makes it sound the way it does and how you can replicate that sound in your own kind of way. And that goes back to my previous answer. That's precisely the way I learned, you know, to write. So next question is from Alex. Are you planning to do something like a Halloween special? Oh man, I would have loved to do something like that. Unfortunately, I didn't have the time. I had a pretty hectic, you know, October, but it was definitely in the plans. I wanted to do like a special, you know, orchestration techniques episode and maybe doing like a little homage, Tim Burton and, and Danny Elfman and maybe Bernard Herrmann and something like that. But I didn't have the time, unfortunately, to do that. I'm gonna try to do that next year, I promise. And I will definitely do a Christmas special. The next question is from Christopher Siu. If you guys don't know who this guy is, you should stop everything right now and go check out his channel. He does a lot of, you know, really cool videos on composition, orchestration, and he has a ton of resources on sample libraries and plugins and stuff like that. Basically the stuff that I don't really want to do. So uh, yeah, go check him out. And Christopher is asking me, what would the ideal milestone be for you? And what steps are you taking currently to work toward it and achieve that? It's a very good question, which I don't have a, I don't have a specific answer because my very my initial goal with YouTube was to just basically get myself known, you know, just by putting my music out and showing people what I could do and eventually to start building some kind of community and connecting with people and create some real kind of relationships. And that goal was accomplished uh, quite quite some time ago already. I don't have a specific goal in terms of how many subscribers I want to have or views or stuff like that. And I find this particular side of YouTube being quite unhealthy for me because I find this part to be quite addictive and I try not to get my head too wrapped up into the numbers because as you well know, being a YouTuber you s yourself, numbers are just numbers, they don't, actually mean anything. Having a huge subscriber count doesn't necessarily mean that you you get to have a, 
an active community that is participating to what you do and and you know showing showing you your support and you know making contacts with you so i guess my answer is i just want to carry on doing what what i do at the moment and if something comes out of it you know it's just extra for me but i don't know let's say for my own vanity that i want to reach 10 thousand subscribers and I then would be happy which is never going to be the case because I said exactly the same thing at one 1000 subscribers and here I am just still kind of pushing forward to make more content and just you know build a bigger kind of community so uh, yeah good question Chris then we have Scott Foster I would love some tips on getting the most out of sample modeling brass specifically do you use a breath controller expression pedal MIDI controller while performing the parts or do you record and automate after never automate after <laughs> just kidding <laughs> uh, no i don't i try to play everything in and i don't have a breath controller or or an expression pedal i just basically use the mod wheel and sometimes if i want to add a little bit of extra vibrato i might just sneak in a little bit of c2 or even perform a little bit of you know vibrato on the mod wheel you know just by moving it in very tiny increments the last question is from my good friend zach heidi how you doing man if you don't know this guy Again, just go check out his channel. It's very talented composer, orchestrator, does a little bit of everything. It's a fantastic resource for everybody who's serious about learning music. And I'm going to put the link to his channel in the description. So Zach is asking, what moment in a film score made you burst into a sobbing mess the second you heard it? Unless that's just me, also congrats. No, it's not just you, man. It's kind of embarrassing because, because this scene, I don't think it's particularly is supposed to be particularly moving or anything <laughs> it was probably just me and it's from the second harry potter movie i think it's right at the end of the movie when when you know hagrid is, <laughs> is coming back from azkaban and you know the whole school is welcoming him and harry goes there wouldn't be hogwarts without you or something like that then just john williams music starts soaring and everybody's cheering and all that and i don't know this kind of stuck with me when i saw the music being played with the live orchestra you know and i don't know man it was something it was something special for me but i was definitely the only one sobbing and everyone seemed to be fine and i felt kind of silly but uh yeah so that's it guys and i hope this i hope you enjoyed this and let me know if you if you want me to do more stuff like this maybe every 2000 subscribers or so assuming assuming the channel is gonna keep growing leave a comment below if you have any further question i will answer it and i guess i'll see you in the next one bye